Hi, this is Melanie with the Pardesi Reviews channel, and I'm here with a special guest, and that is Krishna Chandran, who was in the film Varane Avashamun. I'm so glad that you're with me today. So I'm really excited to talk to you. Um, it was an amazing film. Can you tell me how you became a part of this film? You had the role. Well, you can tell what your character's name, but you had a very distinctive scene where you get slapped in the beginning of the film. <laughs> yeah. No, so um, I, I know Anoop, the director of the film. Uh, from okay. NID. NID is my, like, where I went to study uh, design, animation, film design. I'm an okay. animation filmmaker. Right. So, uh, yeah, and, and he was uh, there as well. And he had wanted to cast me for his graduation film at NID. Okay. Uh, and how it didn't work out because, like, he, he was looking for somebody much younger to play the role. <laughs> and... <laughs> he found somebody in Kerala to finally play the role and uh, he said I'm gonna like you know like cast you in some film someday because <laughs> <laughs> like, okay. you're not even living in Kerala right now so what you said in your email so <laughs> so, so he said okay I'm making my first feature film I want you to I want you to have a part in it I love that yeah Actually, uh, a year before he had called me, uh, saying that he he actually was uh, planning to cast me for the role that Dulkar Salman okay. played. Okay. And he had asked me to you know like not get a haircut for <laughs> for a year. <laughs> yeah, Dulkar's hair was pretty long in the role. <laughs> so then eventually, like Dulkar Salman was producing the film and he wanted to do the that part and because okay. it's it's an interesting even though if it, it's not like the main character in the right. film right it's he's got an interesting arc in the film and you know like and also it's like his first uh, uh production that is yes. you know like coming out and i think it made sense for him to do that role you know like with right. this, like i mean it it makes sense after seeing the kind of response that you know like uh the film got uh like he's got a huge fan following and like oh yeah <laughs> he's got a big <laughs> fan right here <laughs> so, krishna, so like the guy Chris, yeah let me tell you krishna the, the lock screen on my phone is a picture of dulker so <laughs> yeah big fan right here in chicago <laughs> but anyway go ahead <laughs> yeah so so like from a producer's point of view like it really made sense and like you know it's it's an interesting uh, character right so yeah and then then uh, anu later like got in touch with me saying uh, would you mind playing this character instead and i'm like okay why not because i i was not really uh, i never in intended to be an actor like it's just <laughs> I, I, uh, you know when i looked you up it's like you have this <laughs> distinguished career doing these animated films beautiful films which we will get to in a moment and i was like did he always dream of being an actor because he's so talented in this other area but now it makes sense if you were studying at film school together with a director now that makes sense yeah so, well, I, I was also surprised because i asked him later like when i was at the set I, i'm like why why did you choose me like for this i mean initially for Dulkar's role and then you know like later like he didn't give up on me like he wanted yeah. to like have my face <laughs> in the film and I was like why <laughs> and then he was like you have an interesting face you know like it's not he didn't say like a good looking face or any interesting face <laughs> well you know i think there's a lot of people that play those supporting roles you're right people that have interesting faces <laughs> so <laughs> Uh, yeah, because you were distinctive. Like, I, I remembered you. And then when I spotted you late, I was like, oh, there he is again, you know. So um, one question I had, which I said in my email to you, why was Dulker's, because you were going to play the the role that Dulker had, why was his name fraud or his nickname? It didn't make any sense to me. What was that about? Like, I am so, like, into the film. No, right? I mean, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I didn't bother to like rationalize that i 
don't know myself i should probably ask a group about it <laughs> yeah <laughs> tell him there's this lady in in chicago that's so one because i thought well maybe it's a wordplay and what his real name is or something um because that's something that um i struggle with when i'm reading subtitles that mm -hmm. wordplay um jokes that are you know words that are have different meanings or something it doesn't always come through in subtitles especially comedies it's hard um you know or punch yeah. Di punch yeah. dialogues or things that rhyme i can sort of hear that it's rhyming but i don't get the uh -huh. same effect that i think in the, the native language you know so um but i really i told you i said in the interview i mean i said in my review that I really admire Dolker for taking the minor role, but kind of putting his stardom stamp on it. I mean, it also, it also hit Shabana and Serge Gopi, but I think it was a wonderful thing to make for his first, um, his his production company, Where Fair Films. And I didn't realize when I did my review that Anoop um, is the son of a famous director. And it sounds like he's done work in documentary films as well, but this was his first fictional feature film that first full-length yeah. feature film and it was it was such a good debut it was i mean what a great film for you to be a part of you know it was yeah. it was really nice so would you want to do any more films if i mean if a new, i'm sure a new, people are coming calling for a new wanting him to do um his next film would you be uh interested in doing more yeah i mean if, if something comes my way yeah I, i'm definitely i was I, it was really interesting i really had a lot of fun being on the sets and I was like, you know, like fanboying. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I, can, I can imagine. So, uh, I've grown up watching them, right? Uh, right. In the 90s. And yeah, like just to see them, I was so intimidated to like go and actually have a conversation with yeah. either of them. <laughs> right. <laughs> because, uh, and I had my sketchbook and my colors all along, like the throughout the yeah. time I was there. And I just kept like secretly, <laughs> I was standing by the side corner, like where nobody would notice me. And I was like trying to get a sketch of all these people, like, all the activities. I just wanted to document the whole thing through sketches. And if you see my Instagram, like I, yes, I put I up saw, some of my... I saw this. some of the sketches that you had done of Shobana and, and, other, and Suresh and other people on the set and the director and other people behind the cameras. It was really cool. Um, yeah. So now it makes sense to me. I'm just putting the things together that Anup wrote this part for you because Dolker's part, he was like an animator. He was, he was drawing. And at, what was the company <laughs> that you guys were working at? I couldn't quite figure it out. <laughs> I don't think that was important. I, mean, I was working it was like at he had, he had a client <laughs> to pick up that he had, to, you know, like there was that whole thing, but then he was doing drawing and, and you were part of that whole company too. So yeah, I was like, no, no, I was part of another company that, that, uh, Kalyani worked in. So that okay. was a bank. Okay. Yeah. Oh, but, yeah. but, she, but I remember there was a scene where Dolker was making cartoons and drawings. So he must've been thinking of you when he made that character. Now it makes, it all makes sense. <laughs> I'm not sure, but maybe. <laughs> I can, I'd like to believe that. <laughs> I think so. I think. Well, you know, it's also something that I've come to admire about the Malayalam film industry is it seems like no one really has egos about, and they they love being part of each other's films. It's such a small community that. Somebody who's a director of one film is then acting like Salvin Shahir is a perfect example. You know, he can be directing a film like Parva and then he's acting in other films. And, you know, it's it's just such a tight knit community, it seems like. And I love that about it. So everybody just, you know, sure, I'll take the supporting part in your movie and be part of it. And yeah, I love that. So it just seems to be. A great community. So I, Malayalam Cinema, as you know, if you've been watching me, is something really special to me. So I would love to see you in another movie. So yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean that, that the, one of the reasons I also like uh, took up this uh, this role is also because you know I wanted to see how the industry right. functions. And, right. Because I'm an animator, I sit inside my you know like studio space. I, I don't see the outside world while I'm right. making a film. And like eventually, like I mean, it's it's essentially a uh, just a medium of telling stories, and I, I would like to someday 
you know like make live action films as well okay uh, i mean because i have these beginning of ideas which i see uh working better as an an- uh, live action film right. than an animated film so right. you know like i'd be able to uh have that skill set as well so i thought like it'll be nice like to just this is like the most comfortable way of experiencing a film set right like i'm being taken care of <laughs> like <laughs> really well <laughs> and being uh, like in nid like where we study i've seen how films are made and you know it's like they have like shoestring budgets and right even the actors are a part of the crew like they're all helping each other out and um you don't have the luxury of just like sitting <laughs> you know like sitting in your a... trailer <laughs> <laughs> So how long was the filming for this for this shoot? I know I read in our interview with Anoop after I did my video that he waited, I think, over a year for Shobana to say yes. So he probably had really planned it out, but was praying he with her in mind. And she finally did say yes. But then how long did the filming take? It was was it a long shoot or just really fast or about two and a half months? I think it. It went more or less like like how they planned, but uh, like my my shoot was supposed to be over four days. Okay. But it's out to like different <laughs> episodes. I had to keep coming in and out, and I was like there in the set for a long time because they didn't always have the permissions. <laughs> so, like, <laughs> now we hear. <laughs> So you mean like when they were shooting on the beach or different places in Chennai, they just... It's yeah. just like, okay, let's do it, let's do it, <laughs> like, before anyone spots us. And <laughs> Shobana is pretty famous, and there's a lot of Malayali, like a big Malayali community over there. So, yeah. uh, so the moment, like, you know, like two, three of them spots them, like, you know, it's it's yeah. difficult. Oh, uh, wow. Sure. Like, yeah, there was a lot of uh, scenes of her just walking down the street or going to the beach. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, I can imagine. That was a, really a challenge. Yeah, like shoot like one or maximum two takes and then like just run to the next place. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun. It's, and, it sounds like she's the kind of actress, though, that can do things in the first take, which is, which yeah, is good, yeah. which is good if you have to do a kind of guerrilla style like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and and that's something I realized while I like you know like when I saw the shoot being done like simple things I mean it's it's also I'm sure like from a lot of experience doing this uh, what took me like three four takes like just like one take and then you know it's it's like perfect for them right like Suresh Gopi as well I was just like standing and seeing him. Uh, uh, just, just I don't know, like act so naturally, right? Like I mean, I, I he's known for uh, his action movie roles, but I'm I'm a bigger fan of like roles like these. I love Suresh Gopi and yeah. these kind. Of, uh, they had so, such. I mean, I have not seen all their classic movies, but. I, I know they just had such chemistry together, and that's what Anoop probably just wanted to recapture, and it was so, yeah, that was perfect. It was just perfect, because they just do have that natural chemistry with each other. Yeah, and I, like, I got to read the script quite early on while he was working on it, and I told him, like, Suresh Gopi's character is going to be a hit in this. Yeah. And that, that's what he's, it's like a comeback for him. He's yeah. acted after a long time. He's been busy with it, with politics and all that. And like, like he's acting after a big gap. And yeah. like people are loving his character. Oh, yeah. Well, he did get that one little action scene. <laughs> and I think he was yeah. doing, doing certain dialogues, I think, from older films, which probably yeah. over my head. But I could tell yeah. he was kind of like pausing for the... <laughs> For a fact, after certain lines, <laughs> applause for those scenes. I mean, uh, that, that's what the movie also has a lot of, uh, I think, humor that the Malayali audience would, you know, get right. more than you know the right. audience. Even even the 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 psychiatrist, the, yes. the doctor. One of my favorite characters. He is one of film. my favorite characters. I I didn't really talk about him in my review, but he was wonderful. He was so funny. <laughs> but 
even even like a lot of his uh, the the comedy comes from the way he speaks you know like the way he yeah. uh, his, his dialect right. uh, which is specific to like a s- certain part of kerala and okay. you know, it's really that makes it funnier for <laughs> for us <laughs> Well, it just sounds like it was a wonderful experience. And like you said, if you're looking forward to trying to do not just animated films, but live action, what a great school to just see everything in action and behind the scenes. And yeah, Yeah. I I think, uh, like I said, I think Anoop did a wonderful job and I can't wait to see what he does next. So tell me about, I was looking up your work, uh, which is amazing, your animation work. Had you always dreamed of being an animator or um, did you just think I'm, I want to do something with art or what sparked you to want to do animated films? I I mean, I've always enjoyed drawing since since childhood, but I've always uh, like I, I used to tell uh, myself, you know, like to not be a filmmaker because <laughs> I mean, it was a very naive reason because uh, I'd get to know the ending the of the film <laughs> <laughs> i love that oh that's so sweet <laughs> i don't i don't want spoilers <laughs> so, <laughs> so, I, so i didn't want to be a filmmaker for that reason but yeah ended up coming here uh so yeah i mean it, it was in my like towards the last year of my school you know, like school days, mm-hmm. I was wondering what do I do? I didn't want to do engineering, which was right, what yeah. most of my uh, batchmates were going to do. And yeah, I mean, <laughs> so I, it took a little bit of convincing. Like with my father is like a closeted artist. So he was in, like uh, very supportive. And uh, I wanted to go to a, you know, like the best school uh, if I'm doing this. Right. So I got to know of NID and thankfully it, it worked out for me and they were very supportive that way. And so that school is in India and then, or yeah. is, and then, and then how did you get, what was that institute in, in France that you worked at or studied at? What was, can you tell me about that? What was that about? That's La Poudrière. It's a animation direction school. Wow. Uh, yeah, so they have a two-year program for that focuses on animation direction. Um, it they they take about like ten people, nine to ten people every year, and three of which are like from other countries. Like the, wow. Yeah, so I didn't really know what I was getting into. Did you <laughs> have just, Did you have to know French to go? <laughs> but wow. I didn't know any French. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so. <laughs> I went there for an interview and everything. It was all in English. And then they asked me, are you going to learn French? I'm like, yes, I'm going to learn French. How difficult is it going to be? Oh, no. <laughs> so I quickly got, went back home and like enrolled myself at uh, Alliance Francaise. Right. Again, like the film, uh, this this film I has know, Alliance. I Shob- she's teaching French. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So I I had to uh, so Shobhana's dubbing is done by this um, very well known dubbing artist called Bhagi Lakshmi. Okay. So I had to make sure she speaks French <laughs> well, like for Shobhana's <laughs> voice in the film. Uh, yeah, so I, I I did like the A one level uh, and I landed up in France, thinking wow. yeah, I mean it could be enough, but it was not. <laughs> Was it in uh, was it in Paris or is, was it in another city? Where was it? It was a smaller city. It's closer to Lyon. Okay. Uh, mm-hmm. It's 
called Valence. It's a okay. small city, um, like towards the beginning of south of France. Right. So, so yeah, like I just just landed there. There were three, I mean, two other foreigners apart from me, and the entire first three months was just so. Wow. <laughs> What what was the, oh, I mean what was the culture shock like I mean it, well you said it's a smaller town in France too but uh, yeah. I have I have visited France and like I studied French in school but it's just like then you're trying to speak it and they're just like <laughs> they're just kind of looking at you like what are you trying to? <laughs> they're a little snobby about other people trying to speak French <laughs> it's a smaller place so they were very like appreciative when I when they heard me trying. They were very welcoming and yeah, <laughs> well, that was nice. <laughs> Maybe that's a small town versus Paris. <laughs> no, no, no. I've had like both experiences in in Paris. Like I've had people who were like very happy that I'm making an effort to speak in French, and also people who are I guess used to this and like just fed up of it. So they were just like very rude <laughs> initially, but then. My my friends got to a decent level where I can have conversations now, so now it's it's, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, so. one one thing that's fascinating about the way um, film is revered in France is that my husband had a conference in Paris, and I came along, and I'm like, it's fine, I can keep myself busy, and they have all these movie theaters that show classic movies like you can go to a movie theater and you can see i saw an old sean connery film you know i was like i'm in paris and i'm seeing but it's just i don't know it's just a completely different level of um love of cinema and it's yeah it was just wonderful i felt it yeah which is kind of how i feel like indian people have this love of cinema first day first show all of that yeah, yeah, which is very different. <laughs> Not everybody in America is like that. Let's just put it that way. So, oh, okay. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I mean, especially for Malayalis, like movies are such a big part of their lives. I haven't, right? I hadn't even seen a Hindi or an English film like till, uh, like a you know, like much later into my like life. I mean, I used to watch them, uh, watch English films on Star movies or you know, right. like one of those. The, the HBO or something. Right, right. Uh, that too, very limited number of films, like only a certain kinds of like Jim Carrey films. And, right. You know, I mean, I think it's easier to understand with his physical comedy. And <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, so I, I did a lot of those catching up while I was at the shoot. Like, you know, they, they, they had put us up at this nice hotel. And uh, I was all like, you know, like from what I've seen, I, this is such a new world for me, right? I've seen Malayalam film industry through like, you know, these videos, interviews and everything. So I hadn't understood. I mean, what I understood was like, it's a, <clears throat> the budget is substantially like smaller compared yeah. to other film industries in India. And I was all prepared to stay in a lodge, like a tiny <laughs> makeshift. <kind laughs> of and I carried my soap and towel and <laughs> but then I was like put up in a this really fancy hotel and I'm like wow like I didn't know <laughs> Malayalam films had so this this kind of money and uh, yeah so I used to have my mornings uh, free like when I didn't have the shoot I ended up like I said you know like uh, being there for more than I was right, required longer, so, yeah yeah, so uh, I think that is also the reason why I ended up being in the film a lot more than <laughs> I was meant to be. They just put us in the sound and the the music and the so, sorry the the songs in the film. Yeah. Uh, so that you know it's it sort of um, like Kalyani. It looks like Kalyani has a like a social life outside the circle, right? right? So right. so yeah, we we weren't we weren't supposed to be. Uh, in in the film for that long initially like in the script <laughs> so <laughs> so yeah i used to uh, be in my hotel room in the morning i used to catch up on these movies that i didn't see as a you know like in my childhood <laughs> so a lot of these charming <laughs> things and, uh, harry potter the prisoner of azkaban all these films i'd seen harry potter but like 
all that british accent and everything just went above my head like when i saw it <laughs> <laughs> now now i could yeah make sense of it <laughs> i was doing that in the morning then i would go to the set <laughs> Boy, you had a rough life, I'm telling you, for those couple of months. <laughs> uh, so when you were studying at this elite animation school, wow, it just sounds absolutely, what a, I mean, this tells you how talented you are that of the three slots for all around the world that you got one of them, you let me see a couple of your short films, which I was blown away, especially Chandra's Cafe. I thought, I mean, it was, yeah, pulls your heartstrings. It's like a little bit bittersweet at the end. Um, and I saw you had an interview posted on that Vimeo channel. Somebody uh, interviewed you in France, <laughs> thankfully in English, <laughs> so I could understand. But you talked about that it was about long distance relationship. So um, did you end up together with the person that you were in a long distance relationship with? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So, I did, I did. I, uh, so I'm married to her. Right now, like I'm living in Indo where she is from. Okay. And yeah, so, so, so you were separated those two years while you were in, in France. Yeah. So my yeah. husband, my husband long and I, yeah, we had a long distance relationship while we were in college. We met at a summer job and then, um, yeah, so we, so after a couple of years apart, then we were, we got married too. So we just had our 30th wedding anniversary. So, oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so um, well, that was, I just, it was so heartwarming. So have you been showing these at film festivals or? Um, have you had, and so the other one was Funny Fish, which I saw, I think on your Instagram, is, did that become a children's book or, um, I mean, can you tell me more about that, that? Yeah. So that, that, that was done as a part of a residency program in the studio called Folimash. Uh, it's one of like the reputed studios in <clears throat> France for animation films. And, uh, yeah, so they, I mean, I just sent my film, this this idea that I had, I had to have a reason to stay in France, <laughs> you know, like, once my studies were over, I wanted to get some job exposure as well, like, before yeah. coming back to it. So I thought, like, okay, worth the shot, let me just uh, send this script, because I, I there's this big festival called uh, NSE for Animation Film okay. Festival in called Annecy uh, and they have the this pitch uh, session uh, over there so you can send your project over there if you it's selected you can pitch it in front of you know like producers and like from from all over the world right. and <clears throat> so I wanted to send it out I didn't have an idea and I was like really bummed on the last day of uh, the the you know like the day for sending your application and I just like I'm bummed this is this is while Chandran's Cafe was going on like the production I just entered production for that and I was really bummed and I was sketching and like just doodling some thing round and I ended up doodling a balloon and I saw on the other page that it looks exactly like a fish that uh, was drawn earlier like on another page. And I'm like, oh, the form similar, you know, like, like then suddenly this, this idea just clicked, you know, what if the, the fish thinks, you know, like the balloon is another fish that is stuck on the other side of the world and they're right. trying to bring it into this world. And, uh, so I just like, I was like, damn it. Like, you know, <laughs> I wish I thought of this a week later before so that I could have applied Anyway, I just like went ahead and like made a uh, like a portfolio for the film, uh, this idea, and then I just sent it to them, and it worked out, and they they selected my film for this one year residency program, wow. and uh, yeah, so so as a part of the residency program, like they what they usually do is uh, make a children's book out of using the using the uh, uh, screenshots from the right, film right right i sort of insisted that you know, i don't want to do that let, if i'm doing it let me just have an illustrated book oh. because you know i can also treat these images as reference for you know like you have to do the color script for the film before 
the film starts right so let me just read it as that because anyway i have to uh, make these you know like images before the film starts so i made a an illustrated book uh, and i treated those as reference for each shot uh, while i was making the film and the film the book was is already out uh, it's on amazon but i think it's only available in europe or france oh wow so okay it's in french yeah. <laughs> okay <laughs> wow <Yeah. laughs> and i saw on instagram you just illustrated someone else's uh children's book i can't remember the name of it but yeah that's a it's, it's a ngo called pratham okay so they they try why i like working with them is that they try and make these books as cheap as possible and make it available to like you know like every segment of the society they have translated it to like multiple languages okay and very accessible for you know children like from of different uh, parts of the world and like right. different section of the society and right yeah so oh, it yeah. was yeah so it was wonderful so what other so it took you a year to do the funny fish is that why, how how many minutes was that <laughs> Wow. Six, <laughs> six, six minutes. minutes for a whole year. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, uh, I, I think, nine nine months. Nine, yeah, even then. <laughs> I mean, it was gorgeous. It was absolutely beautiful, but wow. <laughs> wow. So are you looking to do another short film, or what kind of projects are you working on right now? I Right now I'm working on a um, documentary feature length uh with this friend of mine in france so the project is like a us based project it's about a boy uh like an immigrant family in us who um, this this boy has gone under like bad influence and he's joined a gang and everything so okay. they they're trying to counsel him and uh, it's a, it's a very sad story but i think it's got a happy ending i'm not sure like what happens in the <laughs> end yet <laughs> so I think a lot, a lot of it, uh, these uh, <coughs> counseling rehabilitation uh, sessions that were recorded, uh, audio recordings of it, we are animating it. So it's oh, going to be a... Oh, okay. Oh, that's... There's about like, yeah, like I think half the film is animation. So oh, that's, we're so crea- the... that's so creative to do it that way. Wow. Okay. So we are handling the, the animation uh like my friend in france me in india so the <laughs> producer in us <laughs> so that's going to go on for a while for like a big chunk of this year and uh, after which i want to focus on like making my own films okay and i have a short film that i've written uh and i don't know yet how to go about making it here because here in india uh it's not as easy as in france like france has a system in place for making yeah. any kind of films so here here it's um, yeah i have to figure out a way so i'm i'm doing a little bit of research on that maybe a co-production or something with you know another country or uh let's see. right <laughs> i mean yeah france has government supported filmmaking i mean they they really support film um yeah. Canada is the same way and you're right India and, and the US uh they don't have that <laughs> they don't have yeah. that at all I did ask uh, some of my friends in US if there is any way I can collaborate with US and yeah that, that's the answer I got like I thought maybe there's a residency program or something in US I just wanted to like be you know like on a lookout for everything every option available but Yeah, it seems like that is the model that is followed in India India as well. Well, so, I can, I, mean, I mean I can tell you that um as far as short films they're basically only so- shown at film festivals unless you're like Pixar showing it in front of one of the big animated feature films. Um yeah. but definitely there are a lot of film, for instance there's a Chicago South Asian Film Festival. and if you had a work you definitely should submit it to that i mean it um there's a lot of film festivals and some of the big ones are 
obviously things like Sundance and a short film is your calling card to get a feature film. And mm. that's how, um, I don't know if you read my about page, but I was, was executive producer of a film that premiered at Sundance called how to tell you're a douchebag. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> it's an African American romantic comedy. And okay. so the director, Tahir Jeter, we met him at Sundance and he was there with his NYU senior project student film, which had gotten into the short program. And I was sitting next to him in the audience. We watched a really bizarre <laughs> horror film. But anyway, um, you're sitting there for half an hour and I saw his badge said filmmaker. So I asked him and then, you know, we kept connected. And then a couple of years later, he asked if we if we would support his fe first feature film, which we did. So me being an executive producer just meant that I financially supported. But I mean, he filmed it on a shoestring in his apartment and his friend's apartment. And like, like this film, just kind of not necessarily getting permission and doing things on the streets of Brooklyn and getting it, getting it done. But um, yeah, that's how, I don't know, it, you know, he had to cobble together friends and family to, to get it made. He didn't have any grants or any government support or anything like that. And it's a challenge. And then even if you get one, and then it's, you know, it's getting the next one, <laughs> you know, which, which is the struggle that he's in right now. So I think um, there are pluses and minuses to all the nepotism that there is in the Indian film industry. I think um, family helps family there and, you know, they help each other get things made. Um, so sometimes it's hard for, it seems hard for talented people maybe from the outside to break in, but... It's, you know, friends do handshake deals and get films made and people like Dulker come in and, you know, get a wonderful film like this made, right? So, um, I don't know. So, yeah, it's just a very different system than what we have here. So, anyway, <laughs> but, um, you know, you shouldn't... Film festivals is one way to go, but I know web series also seems to be um, a calling card in India. Yeah. It seems to be a rising... A rising industry. Yeah, I, mind. I have a, I have a bunch of these uh, ideas, like beginning of, like a bunch of these ideas. So I, I'm, I'm I want to take some time off once this project is done to really, uh, you know, like decide where to go, which direction to take. But right. I, as of now, like, what is closest to being materialized is the short film uh, that I've written. And I really miss uh, <laughs> that experience because while I was in France, I had a short film, at least a short film every year. And, you know, like that, you make that short film and then you just like go around uh, showing your film and right. uh, it was, and I, I just love that experience. Right. And once I came back, I mean, it took a year to like settle down. We weren't in Indore uh, initially, we were you know, in Ahmedabad, where my mm -hmm. school was, the NID. So then we were there and like, then we shifted here. And so all that took a little while. And then I was mostly freelancing uh, on ads and now this project. So, so I was just like trying to like, I, I tried to find time to in, in between to like, you know, like figure out like what I want to like these, these these ideas, just developing them a little more, and uh, yeah. So I have to take some time out. I realized once I'm done with this, I'm gonna take some time out and yeah. Well, this <laughs> docu on. this documentary project sounds like it's gonna be really heavy material. So you're probably yeah. gonna want to do something lighter after that. Yeah. Well, is this the kind? If it's a doc, if it's a documentary, are they aiming to do it for the film festival audience, or um, here in the U.S. at least? Um, the amazing thing is Netflix and Amazon Prime and HBO um, are really helping keep the documentary industry going. There's really kind of a boom in that here in the U.S. So I don't know if I they already eventually. I think they want to, like, once the festival uh, run is over, and then they, they probably are planning to do that, I think. Yeah. So. Well, I, yeah. Want, you to, I want you to let me know when that Emma might be coming out, if it's coming to one of the film festivals in the U.S. Let me know about it. I, would, I wouldn't be so interested. Sure, yes. um, do, does it have a name yet, or do they have they decided? 
I don't know. I'm not sure if it's the uh, work in progress name right. or I'm allowed to say it. Right. So <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I it's think okay. I'll, but it sounds, I'll, it's definitely, uh, it's definitely a hot topic here in the yeah. U.S. right now. I will just say that. And what, um, especially young immigrant men are going through and what they're trying to escape from and, and, and all of that. So, um, wow. It sounds really compelling. It sounds dark, <laughs> but I really like, uh, it sounds like you're going to have not just a small part of the film, but a major part of the film. Anyway, thank you so much, uh, Krishna for your time. I really enjoyed talking to you. I, Thank you so much for sending me the links to those short films, which are amazing. Are they ever going to be available? Are you still doing them in film festivals, or are you going to put them uh, on YouTube at some point? Or so my the Chandran's Cafe is going to be uh, live only after another, I think, seven six years. <laughs> because, oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, we're not allowed to put it up, especially because mine was selected by this channel called Arte. Uh, uh, yeah. I can't. I can't put it up because they can uh, run it on their channel. You know, like any wow. time they want in that ten years. Uh, and funny fish. I don't think I can ever <laughs> put it up online. <laughs> It'll always, always be you know like with the password. Uh, but yeah, like I'm, I'm sending it out to anyone who wants to see it, like with the password and everything. Yeah. Um, but it's amazing in France that, like, like you said, that there's a channel that shows these. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. And uh, apparently, even uh, Tata uh, or Reliance, one of them had bought the the rights to uh, the Funny Fish as well, as in to to air it in India. They oh. have a channel. They uh, show the the films, these festival films, short films. Uh, in 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 their uh, their own channel, I think. I don't remember if it was Tata or Reliance, one of these uh, one of the channels. So yeah, so they do that as well. So it's 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 played in India as well. Wow. <laughs> <But it's... laughs> well, that's awesome. All right. Well, thank you for sharing those with me because I I really I love both of them. They're really beautiful films. You're so you're so creative, and I only wish the best for you in the future. <laughs> All right. Thanks so much. All right. Uh, follow me on Twitter at PradesiYT. Krishna, where they, where can they find you? On your Instagram? What's your Instagram handle? It's at the rate Krishna underscore C Nair. C N A I R. So it's K R I S H N A underscore C N A I R. C N A I R. I will put that link in the description. <laughs> are you on Twitter or are you bother with that? Uh, no. I, I usually put up my. Uh, video stuff on my Facebook and Vimeo page. Okay. So just like, I will put a yeah. link to your Vimeo account in the description below. Thank you so much again.